Hi everyone, welcome to Art of the Unquiet Grave. I'm Ash and today I'm back with another faux taxidermy DIY for you. Um, last video I put out, we did beetles, fake beetles. Today we're going to be doing fake butterflies. Um, so just recently I was actually taking a taxidermy class for um, hide mounting a rabbit at an oddities convention. And when I was there, I saw countless sellers selling insect taxidermy. Um, I've had insect taxidermy in the past. However, it was eaten <laughs> by moths or domestic beetles that somehow got into the picture frames and they annihilated the pieces. So when I was at that oddities convention, I was kept finding myself drawn toward the insect taxidermy, but I didn't want to have anything that could be massacred <laughs> by insects again. So I kind of wanted to take that concept um, of the pieces that I was seeing, but make it bug proof, if you will. Irony, I know. But anyway, so um, today we're making this gigantic framed butterfly piece. Hopefully that light's not too blinding. Um, but we're using completely um, synthetic <laughs> materials. So hopefully this will survive for a long time. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll jump into the DIY and I'll explain along the way about like what the inspiration was or the look that we're going for here. But basically the composition is, is very heavily inspired by Victorian era taxidermy and their etymology taxidermy. So stick around, I'll show you exactly how I did it and I'll see you at the end for a little recap. Okay, so here's a giant clock that I purchased from At Home. Um, and the reason we're going to be using this was because, as I mentioned in the intro, I was very heavily inspired by some pieces that I saw at that oddities convention that I just attended. And I saw so many pieces there that were done using Victorian era convex glass or bubble glass frames. So basically what that was, if you're not familiar, was that the frame would sort of, as you would think, bubble out. Um, so you could put 3D images or um, sculptures, insect taxidermy and things underneath of it. They also use them a lot for like hair art, which we're going to be dabbling in eventually, but we'll get to that later. Um, in any event, I really wanted one of those convex glass bubble frames, but they are obscenely expensive. Um, if you find them on eBay or whatnot, um, you know, or, or like antique stores, they go for hundreds of dollars for one usually pretty small frame. So I had an idea that I thought maybe we could use clocks because obviously clocks have to have some space between the backing there um, and the glass for there to be enough room for the hands of the clock to circulate. So I ended up using a clock, like I said, that I got from at home store and I'm just tearing it apart. I'm shredding it here. <laughs> so I took the hands out uh, and now I'm just peeling that paper backing off, which is where they had the clock face. And this is what we're left with. So this is going to be our clean slate for our butterflies. So this is the glass from the clock face here. And I'm just taking that and I'm tracing it over some um, project board or poster board. And we're going to make a different base for it since we've taken out that, that clock face now. So here I'm just tracing around that oval shape of the clock. And we're going to be using that to make a new base for a fresh start here. Obviously there's some rough edges here, but that's actually fine since we're going to be covering the entire thing anyway. So here, <laughs> you may have seen these curtains before. Uh, I mentioned these in several different projects. I had these curtains that I loved. My cat shredded them. Uh, I've been using them in the fabric from them in various different projects trying to repurpose them. So here, this was like that very shiny red fabric there was like the top of the attached valance of the curtains. And that's what we're going to be using for our fabric to cover that poster board and that's going to be the backdrop for our piece here. So here I'm just stretching that scrap of fabric to fit and we're going to try to make it as taut as possible um, since we need it to be sort of a, a flat canvas for what we're going to do. Now if you end up using fabric you have lying around the house or repurposing it, 
You might find that you get some wrinkling or pilling, but that tends to be okay since you can cover it with whatever you're putting in the frame anyway, so don't panic. But, you know, as a first pass, if you can, try to get it as taut as possible around that poster board. So that's what I did here, and I just took it and hot glued it, and now I'm just cutting off the excess around the edges to get it to lie as flat inside that clock frame as possible once we're ready to put it in. Okay, and so here I'm just using some tacky glue. We're going to put some tacky glue around the, the edges there. I'm just smoothing that out with my finger since I didn't have a paintbrush on hand. Uh, paintbrush would be easier. <laughs> and then I'm also just mixing in some dollops of hot glue. So the tacky glue is stronger, but that'll give us more hold over time. Um, but the hot glue gives us that instant grip that we need. So now I'm just pushing that inside that clock face there. So here I am taking some fake ivy that I found. Um, there was a huge floral arrangement that I ended up finding at a Goodwill thrift store. And I tore it apart and I'm repurposing it for this here. So if you're using different fake flowers or foliage, um, obviously they have that wire running through them. So it, for this particular configuration, I'm trying to make a frame out of our florals, if you will. So I'm trying to make like a border of that ivy. If you end up doing something similar, obviously you're just going to have to try to manipulate the wire that's in those fake flowers to get it to lie um, how you want around your frame. And here I'm just using some hot glue to affix my ivy to that, um, that backboard there. Now this is where you get to have a lot of fun with it. This is like, you know, where you can let your artistic freedom sort of go wild. Um, but obviously, you know, whatever configuration you like to do, this is the time to let it shine. But personally, I was going for a Victorian sort of configuration or layout here. So they were very kind of heavily inspired on like the flora fauna. Um, so I'm trying to make the ivy look like it's creeping down the side and that these like weeds or grass are kind of growing up to meet them. Now again, these are all fake florals. So this is, none of this is real dried flowers. This is all plastic, which makes it nice because it's very malleable and easy to work with. Um, fake florals are a lot more forgiving than dried florals because if anybody has ever worked with those fake florals before, they're basically indestructible. If you work with real dried flowers, they tend to crumble over time and they're a lot more fragile, obviously. So for this project, since I knew I wanted it to follow the curve of our um, clock, I went with all fake flowers. And I'm just playing with sort of the layout that I want here. I thought I wanted flowers up top and down below and I'm trying to kind of go for like a, a cameo effect, if you will. And then the butterflies are going to be, you know, frolicking in the middle here. So that's what we're going for. But I'm affixing everything that you see in the middle with hot glue. Now this is again just a silk flower that I got from that same um, floral arrangement from Goodwill. 98% of what I'm using here is from that same floral arrangement. It was huge. <laughs> so what I did there was I just took a screwdriver and I punctured a little hole um, through our project board that we're using for our base so I can put that flower to lie flush and it's not going to protrude off. So I just sort of nestled into that hole that we made and um, again attached it with more hot glue. And I'm just repeating that step up top here. Mm -hmm. 
Now I find a thing that you can do that makes it look more natural or realistic is to try to sort of mesh in, you know, similar color schemes, similar color families. But the biggest thing that I think kind of sells when something looks realistic with fake flowers, it tends to be the greens. <laughs> like all of your greenery, if you can get some different shades of green, some brown based greens where they're not like that very vibrant Kelly green, make it look a little more dry, a little more like earthy brown toned. It seems to look a lot more realistic in my mind. So here you can see that there's a lot of like yellowy based greens, brown based greens. Um, and we're just kind of trying to mix textures. So we have those soft leaves. We have those like spiky sort of weed looking things at the bottom there and we have our ivy crawling around the top so hopefully in my mind you know when all that gets put together it looks like you have a little ecosystem <laughs> inside of your your mount here So this was a fake butterfly that I got off of um, Ally Express, and it came in a pack of, I think, six or so. Um, they're, they're just made of feathers. So I feel like they're fairly realistic looking. Um, but the thing that I'll give you a tip about is that the antennas, when they come, they are usually very straight. So here I'm just taking them and bending them around my finger a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a more realistic or relaxed look. Now they are fragile though, so be careful when you bend them. And I'm just attaching that with more hot glue. Um, if you notice those white spots on the abdomen, they did come with these um, alligator clips, so you can clip them onto floral arrangements. But since we weren't obviously using those clips, I just popped them off so they would lie flatter inside the frame. Now, if you saw our previous video about the beetle, this was one of those small beetles from that same set that I got off of Amazon. Uh, I just painted him a black and brown shade and he's just gonna get nestled in that shrubbery there for just a little, a little peekaboo, <laughs> I guess. An extra piece of interest. So now I have attached the back of the frame. I flipped it over and I'm just reinserting my screws and just screwing that all back together. And here's the finished result. Okay, so that's how we made our gigantic frame butterfly <laughs> taxidermy piece. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you, this wasn't quite your cup of tea and you're missing some more of like the spookier skeletons and bones, I have a ton of projects coming up in October that I think will scratch that itch for you. <laughs> um, one of which is a huge undertaking and it's a life-size skeleton piece. So if you enjoyed um, the Siamese twin project that we did, I think you'll really like what we have coming up in October. So I hope you stick around for that. Um, please let me know what you thought of our faux insect taxidermy pieces, uh, the butterfly in this episode and um, the previous episode's beetle. I'd love to know if you liked it. Um, let me know in the comments what other kind of videos you'd like to see coming up. And um, like this video if you liked it and please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I've been so grateful for all the support and the kind words that everybody's been leaving on my videos. So uh, it means the world to me. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.